Hello, this is Mike, nostressmike.com. Uh, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to talk about uh, combat, close quarter combat fighting with a knife. But uh, I've already made a video uh, explaining uh, how to do it, uh, where the knife goes. It's a private video. So uh, the only way you're going to get to see it is you need to email me through my website and then I tell you exactly uh, how these knives, uh, where, where, to, where to do it. And uh, so uh, now you need the, now when I talk about close quarter combat, I'm talking about not just like the movies, you know, that you see them just doing their thing. This isn't. This, um, my experience has been in Vietnam. That's where I got most of my experience. And um, I, you always hear me talk about being outnumbered and outgunned. That's, that's exactly what it was. And um, uh, now what I want to talk about is uh, the tools that we used. And uh, precisely, it'll be about uh, the K-Bar. Now, uh, this, I'm not trying to push K bars. Uh, but what I am going to do is explain in detail what makes the K bar uh, a good and uh, effective close quarter uh, combat when you're talking about um, military type use. Uh, in other words, uh, it's not just one on one, it's a bunch. And uh, there's times uh, they don't make good movies. Uh, that's why you don't ever see it in the movies, because as they're coming so fast, it is really quick. And so uh, you, uh, the goal uh, when you're in combat conditions like that is to kill or uh, um, disable uh, the person as quick as possible. And when I say quick, I'm talking uh, it's one one whack. You just get them one time, and then it's a it's a done deal. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's it's so quick it doesn't make the movies. And uh, the reason why the K bar is the right tool to do it uh, is um, the first thing the handle, the design of the handle. You see, it's got this little hump on the end and that keeps your hand from sliding off. Uh, now, uh, your, your hands, when you're doing close quarter combat, especially with edged weapons, it's a bloody, bloody mess. I mean, there's blood all over. So your hand's gonna be covered with blood. And this is a, a leather, uh, leather handle. Now, this one here is, I haven't killed anybody with this one, so. Uh, the handle is smooth and and it probably this is what they like you know to sell them or something I don't know but um, but I say it's smooth uh, but it's best to take some sandpaper and rough it up to get to the the raw leather and it, then you really get a good grip on it because you need to the, the trick is in the grip and so uh, you need to get the grip on there and like I say it won't slide off your hand because of the end and then you've got the, the front plates. I'm not a knife expert, so I can't tell you what the name of all these parts are. But this piece right here, just to keep your hand from going up too far. And you see how big it is. It's, it's pretty good size. And uh, uh, so when you, what it is, you insert is what you do. You insert uh, the blade into the person. And then you, you insert it, and then you twist it and then you jerk it out real quick. It's a just a just bam, bam like that. It's that quick. That's how long the knife fight lasts. <laughs> so that's why it's important to get a good grip on the knife. So you get it, it's inserted, twisted and pulled out. Okay. That's why the grip is so important. And that's why this this thing up here, it stops it when you're cramming it in, then uh, your hand won't slide up onto the blade 
That's why it's so big. And if you even even see mine, it's even bent like that. But I, I'll tell you, uh, most of my uh, close quarter combat against huge numbers uh, was at night. And so it's really confusing. It's really, it's really hard. So, uh, but like I say, so you really don't know what's going on. But what's funny is come morning, uh, this thing is all bent up. Uh, the blade is bent. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, and then the reason is, is you put it in and you've twisted it and jerked it out. And then a lot of times you're bending it. It's not a good in and out kind of thing, like in, twist, and pull it out. It's in, twist, and then you, you're doing like that, and that's why the blades are pent up. That's why uh, some people would get uh, uh, stainless steel blades, uh, and um, they would break. Come morning, you'll find half of a blade or something on there. You've been, you've been punching them instead of uh, really sticking something in. Uh, this is high carbon, and uh, so like I say, that's why it bends. It bends. And um, now also, you can see... Uh, they, they call the, the grooves over here blood grooves is right there. That's what they call them, but I don't know about that. Uh, they say it gets a suction when you insert it. You get a suction, but it, I don't know. But the thing is, you're twisting it and pulling out, so you done got rid of all the suction. So that's really no, not a big thing. Uh, but you see uh, the point, the point on the blade. Now that point is uh, now it's only sharpened on uh, one side. It's only sharpened on the bottom side. That's a false sharpness on top. It, um, some people in NOM would, would sharpen it and some wouldn't. It doesn't make any difference. It's, it's not dull. <laughs> I, mean, it's, I mean, it's really not that important, really. Uh, but you see the pointness, because of the pointness and because of the shape of the blade, uh, if you're going in and it, uh, all you need is to find a spot and then it'll open up the spot to go in. So in other words, if you can get in a rib cage, uh, like I say, the way it's designed, you, even if you hit a rib, it'll slide over it a little bit. Now once it gets over it a little bit, now as it goes in, it'll separate the ribs so then the knife will enter. And then uh, that's why the shape of the blade uh, makes it really good uh, for close quarter combat. Now, uh, uh, what you have to be concerned about uh, when you're when you're going in is you try to get it in as far as possible because the idea you see the length. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have the, the the measurements for you, but the length is enough where it'll pierce the heart, and that's. That's the goal. Uh, if you can pierce the heart, then that you're, you're stopping the person instantly. And uh, already when it goes in and turns and you're jerking it out, the trauma uh, really shuts down the body pretty quick too. So, uh, so this stuff about you know going like that, that's, that's not what I saw. <laughs> that's not what I did, I'll put it that way. I didn't do that. And if anybody was to do that, I would rip them apart. Uh, I mean, that's, that's not, not the way to do it. Now, uh, now see what's. This is a thin blade too. Now, this, this is the 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 cons on the K bar, and that is the thin blade. It's really thin, uh, but it's like that on purpose because it makes it lightweight. And uh, when you start, and like I say, I got a, a, a Bowie knife, and you take the Bowie knife and you start trying to work it, it's heavy, and this is pretty light. Uh, compared to the boy and so and that's what you want you want lightness and you want length and uh, at the same time you can do some slashing with it but it's really best as uh, completely putting it in and, and inserting it and, and getting it out and uh, so if you can get it anywhere uh, into the body uh, it will it will do its job and it's because of the length and then like I say, the way the handle's made, that's what makes the, the K-Bar uh, a great uh, fighting uh, tool. And that's, I think that's probably why the Marine Corps um, made it their official blade. But like I say, now for camping and stuff like that, I'm not 
um, it's, it doesn't really, I don't camp, <laughs> so I can't really say a whole lot about it. But I say, you eat with your knife, and I don't know if I could eat with something like this. And it's, it's a little bit big, you know, for using around the campfire and stuff like that. So I don't know about camping. But uh, uh, like I say, I, I use other knives when I'm eating and, and working around the campfire. Uh, but uh, that's what you look for in a fighting knife. You see the length. I know it's over 12 inches. I know that. And, uh, but like I say, uh, this is what you look for in the, the blade. Uh, stainless steel, like I say, I know stainless steel now. They've, they've changed it since the Vietnam days. So it might be better and stronger. I don't know. But I'm just telling you what makes the K-Bar uh, a good fighting tool. This is Mike. No stress Mike dot com.